Hey there guys, it's Joey and this is Celtic Calling. This week we will be discussing the Welsh goddess Ceridwyn. To the Welsh, Ceridwyn is a triple goddess. She has a maiden, mother and crone aspect. Although her most well-known aspect is the crone and the association with the cauldron, which we'll go into more depth in a bit. Her animal totem is the great white sow pig. She is also associated with the moon, inspiration, poetry, prophecy, shape-shifting, life and death. The singular and most well-known myth of Ceridwyn is that concerning is it Gwion? I think it's Gwion. It is said that she lived on an island in the middle of Lake Tekid, named after her husband with her two children, a beautiful daughter, Kredwi, and a very ugly son, Afagadu, Afagadu. To compensate her son for his unfortunate appearance, Keridrin brewed a magical formula known as Arwen to make her son the most brilliant and inspired of men. For a year and a day, she kept six herbs simmering in her magical cauldron under the constant care of a boy named Guan. One day, while stirring the cauldron, a few drops of the bubbling liquid splattered on his hand. Unthinkingly and in pain, Guan sucked his burned hand. Suddenly he could hear everything in the world and understood all secrets of past and future. With his newly enchanted foresight, he knew how angry Keridrin would be when she found out that he had acquired the inspiration meant for her son. He ran away, but Keridrin pursued him. Gwion changed into a hare, and Keridrin pursued him as a greyhound. He changed into a fish, and Keridrin chased him as an otter. He became a bird, and she flew after him as a hawk. Finally, he changed into a grain of corn, and Keridrin, triumphant, changed into a hen and ate him. When Keridrin resumed her human form, she conceived Gwion in her womb and nine months later birthed a son, whom she in disgust threw into the water of a rushing stream. He was rescued by a prince and grew into the great Celtic bard Taelson, uh, from, from the Arthurian myths known as Merlin. And I think it does, I do have it written down, but I will mention it here, that Merlin is actually the name of the greatest of all bards, like the head bard, I think, of the, the Druids, and that title has been passed down over, from, over time from person to person. So even though we know him as Merlin, his name was Tails, Tylerson. Okay. This story is often attrib attributed to wrathful anger, but can also be viewed as a metaphor for the relationship between a teacher and a student. Keridrin was the teacher and Gwion the student, and it is the job of the teacher to challenge the student when they are ready. The random drops of Keridrin's brew, which flew out of her cauldron and onto Gwion, can be seen as sparks of knowledge which, when they hit our being, run through us like wildfire, exploding with sudden meaning. During the chase, Keridrin forced Gwion to acquire new wisdom as she shapeshifted into the predator that could catch and kill the prey whose form Gwion had assumed. Therefore, she forced him to use the wisdom he had acquired, and in the end, she devoured him to bestow upon him a new and greater identity, that of the legendary poet Tailsin. Thus, he was initiated into the mysteries. Unfortunately, remembered for just this myth, there is there is very little outside of this myth. Therefore, a lot of the information available is based on personal experiences and personal effort, meaning that those things are acquired to know her. Keridwin is also known as the keeper of the cauldron of the underworld from which divine inspiration and wisdom flow. In the ancient Celtic tradition, the cauldron is its central religious mystery or theme of regeneration which grows deep within the womb of the goddess. Keridrin is the womb of potential from which all manifestations flow and because of that it is thought to represent the wheel of life, the beginning, the end and then the rebirth from Journey of a Poet. So then I have my own thoughts and as the 
time went on with me thinking about this and coming across um, bits and pieces, I became incredibly inspired and, cr and I had these incredible flashes of foresight and it was weird. <laughs> I was like, this is so weird and so wonderful that you're engaging with the information and it's actually happening to you at the same time. Those energies are starting to flow through you, it's great. So I wrote down here, this is me. Perhaps the lack of mythology here is almost the point and the nature of the myth. One event, one story, one point of view is not knowing nor wisdom. It must be pursued, present both in the myth itself, as the shape-shifting form pursuit, as well as in the lacking of information surrounding Keridwin. So, in the myth, Gwion is pursued, and if you want a relationship with Keridwin, you must pursue it on a personal level. And obviously, he shapeshifts and so must you. You must shift your perceptions, shift your perspectives and engage on a personal level. A personal relationship and effort must be made before enlightenment of any kind can be found. This could be seen in the myth as Gwion tending the cauldron for so long before illumination is found, is given. I wondered if Keridwin's ugly son and Gwion were related or meant to be reflections of the same son who must be reborn in order to become the great tales in. I had yet to find any references outside of this tale to Afagadu, Afagadu um, her ugly son. Whereas there is plenty of information about tales in. Talzin struck his rescuer as being beautiful, and his name means a radiant brow. So, is it possible that through all the rebirths he became who he was meant to be? Door! <laughs> Talzin also attributes his magical talents to Keridwin. From the bard, Talzin. Is not my chair protected by the cauldron of Keridwin? Therefore let my tongue be free in the sanctuary of the praise of this goddess. And if he's praising her, there's, there's, there's no animosity there, you see, in that sense. Rivers are also connected with the Celtic underworld, so Keridwin putting him in a pouch and sending him away could be a symbol of his final rebirth into the greatest of all Celtic bards who would be remembered throughout history. Symbols of Keridrin include earth, water, underground water in particular, late autumn and winter, cauldron, caves, apple seeds, acorns, hazelnuts, and grain. Vervain, sandalwood, sage, patchouli are all herbs which are sacred to her. Obsidian, lapis, onyx, moonstone, and emerald are gemstones. There is another hint I noticed in the story and that is of the grain, which is Gwion's final transformation. On the surface of it, it would appear to be a foolish transformation for one gifted with foresight, although it could be argued that Gwion knew he had to be reborn, given his insight and his foresight. It could also be alluding to something else, Keridrin's role as a grain goddess. Tyler Took tells us that Keridwin is the Welsh grain and sow goddess, magical art of Taylor Took, and indeed a sow could have been fed with grain. But there is no hint of this other than the grain bit in that one myth. However, Henun, and it's actually spelt Hel Hen Henwin, the white one, was thought to be the English counterpart to the Welsh Keridwin, sharing similarity in name as well as sharing the sow as their symbol. Hernun is a grain goddess of peace, prosperity and harvest. Although arguments can be made for them being separate, similarities arise. In the powerful swine herds of the island of Britain, Hernun's tale is told. So now we're going to be interesting with the pronunciations that I could not find. <laughs> One of the swine of Derwer Delbin in Cornwall was pregnant. Her name was Henoon. It was prophesied that Britain would be the worse for her womb burden. At Penhurn Austin in Cornwall, she, the sow, entered the sea, and at Aber Haragi in Gwent, Wales, she made landfall, accompanied by Comachofwe the entire trip. 
In the grain field in Gwent, she issued, gave birth to a grain over wheat and henceforth, and a bee. And henceforth that place was best known for wheat and bees. From there she went to Lyon in Penfro, and there she brought forth a grain of barley and a bee, which is why the barley of Lyon, 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 Lyon is proverbial. At the hill of Ugh. <laughs> Seifwich in Irony, she birthed the wolf cub and a young eagle. Col gave the eagle to Brennan, the Irishman, and the wolf to Menwaid of Ochwaid. Alochwaid. From there she went to the Blackstone of Lanfair in Arfron where she birthed the kitten. Con Col threw the kitten into the Menai River, but she was recovered and fostered by the sons of Pelug and became one of the great three oppressions of Mon Anglesey in England, um, in, along with the eagle and the wolf cub. The similarities here are obvious. Hanoon means white one and is literally presented as a sow. And Keridwin is associated with the great white sow. As Hanoon is presented literally as a sow, it's believed she could shapeshift or was trapped into that form. Similarities there with the shapeshifting. She also enters the water connecting her to the other world. And her prodigies are not only prophesied about, prophecy, wisdom and poetry being the, another connection, but they are birthed into being. And the cat, cat of Pelog is thrown into a river, rescued, and becomes a powerful force to be reckoned with. Much like Talzin. So there is the white one, the white sow, the grain element, the birthing of things into being, the prophecy of things being negative and the rejection of the final okay rejection of the final child which is placed into a river which then becomes a great force to be reckoned with and actually ties into the Arthurian legend. Additionally it's been suggested that Caridwin's two original children symbolize light and dark male and female as does the goddess herself. First she abused birthed beauty, then ugliness, and then sought to balance the ugliness, darkness, through the gifts of illumination. Instead, she gave death and rebirth to Talzin. Here I really do wonder if her ugly son and Gwion are synonymous for the same entity, two sides of the same twin as mentioned in other myths, light and dark. Only through great trials is one of the greatest baths, bards of all time birthed. Hen-Hoon's children are equally divided of great boon, light to men, or of great detriment, dark. However, the oppressors of Britain can be overcome, arguably making them trials of worthiness. Some argue that the three drops from the cauldron mixture Arwen, Arwen have come to symbolise the druidic name for life force and inspiration behind the universe. The symbol of the three lines is a way of invoking and sending blessings. So if her inspiration and her knowledge has become synonymous with universal life force, universal inspiration force behind the universe, and she is mentioned in poetry praising her for illumination and poetry and all these beautiful things, then the story of Tales In as a flat-up wrath story doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So looking beyond that, looking into the symbolism, I think becomes very important. I also noticed that in the tale of Gorion shapeshifting, it should be noted that he passes through three metamorphic stages, corresponding to the three druidic elements, earth, sea and sky. First he shifts into a hare, earth, then a fish, sea, and then a bird, sky. Given an intimate relationship between the number three and the Celtic symbolism of the stages of life, life, death and rebirth, of which, of course, Keridrin is considered to embody within herself, this could be seen as his first cycle. And then he becomes grain, earth, grows in the womb, sea, blood, womb, and is reborn, and his first breath being into the sky. 
He is then placed into a leather pouch, earth thrown into a river, sea, before being lifted out by his rescuer, lifted into the sky. Three cycles of three to birth tales in, nine being symbolic of the goddess. Now that's just my thoughts about it, my thoughts about how he ties into the elements, three by three, being tied into the cycles of the goddess. I love that. There is also mention of Keridwin being a dark goddess. There was mention of her also sharing the title of Washer of the Ford and Keliach, but I couldn't find anything else to back that up. Those things would link her to the Morrigan, obviously, and having a, a darker element. And I just could not find any more information to back that up. However, I think this, even through one myth, myth here, and maybe her um, sort of almost symbiotic relationship with this, this English counterpart goddess, and you can start to see how strands of similar symbolism and storytelling could feed into the myth of Keridrin. And she's best known for her cauldron of inspiration. And it's, you know, when reading this story, is it possible that a goddess so connected with cycles and illumination and knowledge and poetry and prophecy wouldn't be aware that leaving a young boy tending the cauldron and the drops would fall on his hand. Now I don't think that's feasible and I honestly got that very strong sense of is it possible they are basically supposed to be the same entity, like connected, because then the other one disappears when he, you know, when uh, Tailson is born, is reborn. It may be there are more myths concerning him and I just haven't come across them, but given the light-dark relationship of a lot of sort of twin symbolism and balance symbolism and rebirth symbolism, that made more sense to me. So this was incredibly interesting. It was, it was just... The, the grain of corn bit, for example, seemed like such a small part of this myth and then this information came forward about Henoon who was connected to grain and all her myths being very similar and she had been named as the uh, counterpart goddess to Keridwin, sort of having a mirror of each other and it makes you wonder if there had been myths about Keridwin similar to that that have been lost. So yeah, I thought it was incredibly interesting this week. I had all this illumination flashing about and I had the um, elements come into my mind, you know, the uh, sea sky and how that was mirrored through the shape-shifting and how he'd like, like gone through all the elements to become who he set out to be, be become, became, and on that note I think we'll stop. <laughs> so that has been this week's Celtic calling about the goddess Keridwin. Many blessings.